I could probably go through my whole career and not mention what I've been through. I felt so distant from them and I felt so lonely. What was, what was the lowest moment? Probably when, well, when I did, I took the overdose. When I was 16, 17, like, going away to, to the academy, like, if I'm being brutally honest now, I said to my mum the other night that I wish I'd never have gone. Like, if I could change something now about growing up, they always say, what advice would you give to yourself if you were younger? Like, mine would be, I oh, don't go to the, the academy, and that's nothing against Arsenal, it's nothing against the academy, but I just think now, like, I wish I'd have stayed at home. I would have wished I'd have gone to a college and learnt a trade um, and come out of something. When I was younger, football was just my focus. That's all I was interested in, that's all I wanted to do. Um, over the park with my dad all the time, um, playing football. And, that's how obviously what I had to focus on and what I had to keep my concentration on was my football. So I was away from home a lot. I weren't doing well in, in school. I wasn't interested. I was going through things as in I knew I was, I knew I was gay. I mean, I knew I was gay from younger. Um, it was then sort of a bit more, you're talking about relationship then. You talk, no, you're talking about taking things a bit further than just liking someone or thinking someone's nice looking and that. Um, and then my football, it was like, I was, I was with Arsenal first team, I weren't playing, I was bench, um, obviously with the team they had it was no surprise but I don't really think I handled that well either and I don't really think I had the guidance as well um, then as for a younger player so I think it was a lot of things that built up at that time. Jilly, you've got a big smile on your face, how does it feel to score the first ever goal in the Women's Super League? Oh, it's always nice, especially for a defender to get the credit, she's usually the striker is taking all the glory so it's nice, just popped up, was there in the right place and just stuck it in. Oh, it was like lonely, like sort of just away from everyone. It was like I had separate lives, like now, like families first, like now. Um, whereas back then it was sort of like football, 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 and I just was so engrossed in football and the people I was around, like I probably would have put those people before my family and not necessarily those people weren't the best for me. speaking to a friend on Facebook Messenger, um, who was in America at the time, and I think she sensed that something was, obviously I was down, and I remember going up to my room and I shared a house with Becky Spencer, and on the doors you have like a lock like you would for a front door, um, but my lock was broke, so it was on the latch. My friend in America alerted people at home, and my friends come back and then found me in the bedroom and took me straight to hospital, and then I was put on a drip, and my mum and dad come, and so I think that was like, the lowest point that I've ever felt in my life. I know I, I could have and I probably should have turned to my mum and dad, but I think where I was in, I was away in academy, I felt so distant from them and I felt so lonely, I wouldn't have, do you know what I mean? And, and if they'd have asked, well, what's going on? I weren't in a position and I weren't comfortable enough to say, I'm gay or I've got feelings for a girl. But then again, it was like the college work, like I'd gone there, to do college, and I know I, I knew I was failing in it. So how do you tell them that, Mum, Dad, listen, I'm having to drop down a level because I'm doing so bad? You said how much you wanted to get here with West Ham. You've been there so many times with Chelsea. What does it mean in your first season at West Ham oh, to make this it? This is so special. I'm not joking. I feel like I'm quiet. It's unbelievable. I don't want people to judge me now on that because. I'm a completely different person to the person I was then. And uh, my mum said to me the other night on the phone, she said, I really worry when I go quiet, um, whether it be on social media or in the WhatsApp group, she said, because I know one then I said, like, I'll never ever do it again. Like, it would never even come into my mind to do it because I didn't talk to no one, but I didn't think about anyone else. Like, I didn't think about my mum and dad. I didn't think about my, my family or anything like that. Whereas now I'd be like, no way would I even consider leaving those people behind. Um, and you don't, but when you're, when you're in that moment, you don't think about anyone else. You don't think about leaving anyone or how's that going to affect everybody else in my life. Probably, I'd say, after that happened, six, seven months, I've come out to my mum um, as gay. Uh, and that's, I think now, like, I talk to, I know I've got people around me, good people around me, that whether it be my family, whether it be people I work with, I know now that there's certain people I could pick up the phone to or message and go, listen, I'm in a bad place, can you talk?
lot of people, I think, will be surprised and think, oh, he never expected that from Gilly. But I think that's the prime example is in to say, you never know what's going on at home. You never know what's going on behind people's front that they put on. And that's why I think we have to be a lot more, a lot more open-minded and a lot more reach out to people. Like, even if people say they're okay, like dig, dig, dig a little deeper because people put on a front and people put that front on so easily now, but you never know what's going on behind closed doors. I hope my story can help people in any, any way possible. Thank you.